Commissions, official voting on actions by the Board of Commissioners, presentations by departments of the county, and recognition of service that makes our county great. Agendas of the meetings are posted on the Commissioner's Bulletin Board and released on the county website and through local media in the time required for public notice. Many of the conclusions on the business presented to the Board of Commissioners have been discussed in detail and prepared by the administration office and staff prior to consideration at this meeting and the official vote. These prior discussions also have been properly noticed and the work done in a transparent manner. We encourage you to come and experience the process by attending any of these meetings or watch online at jacksoncountyor.gov. And now, your Jackson County Commissioners, Dave Dodderer, Rick Dyer, and Colleen Roberts, working for you. Well, good morning, everyone. It is 9.30, so we'll call the Board of Commissioners regular meeting for March 6, 2024 to order. We are live here in the Courthouse Auditorium and on Zoom, audio video conference. We'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you please stand and follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Now we have a special presentation. Our employee of the month is Holly Powers from County Administration and Emergency Management. Come on up, Holly. Thank you all for coming. Special occasion here. We have our employee of the month for March 2024. First of all, excuse my voice. I'm a little froggy. Uh, not sick, just froggy. Uh, it's Holly Powers from County Administration and Emergency Management. She's presented March 6, 2024. Holly Powers began working for Jackson County in May 2021 as the emergency manager. Prior to coming to Jackson County, Holly had over 12 years of experience working in the emergency services field throughout Northern California. The county is very fortunate to have an emergency manager with that experience that she has to handle the types of emergencies we face in our community. Holly joined the county following the devastating effects of the Alameda and South Oban chain fires. She had her work cut out for her, I would say so, when the Jackson County Fire Incidents After Action Report was issued. In addition to addressing concerns identified in the report, Holly is always striving to integrate better communication and build strong working relationships between key emergency service stakeholders in the Rogue Valley and improve the overall coordination needed during an emergency. She has created templates for the Jackson County Citizens Alert Emergency Notification System so that time-sensitive alerts can be initiated and sent as quickly as possible. These templates are now being utilized statewide. In addition, during Holly's short time with the county, she has updated the county's emergency operations plan and has just recently received the commissioner's adoption of the 2024 Jackson County Multi-Jurisdictional Natural Hazard Mitigation Plan. She will soon begin work on a crisis communication plan for Jackson County, never stops, does it? And other projects to mitigate, prepare for, respond to, and recover from disasters which could potentially impact our community. Congratulations, Holly, and thank you. Well, I just, again, to come here after the di disaster of all the fires we had in 2020, and what a time to arrive. <laughs> and you came anyway. <laughs> but um, I will tell you, from all the areas I cover, and from one area of Jackson County to the other, um, I hear your accolades just proclaimed. And I will tell you, I go to Shady Cove and they go, tell your emergency manager, thank you for the great work she does. They work with us in getting our emergency management plan uh, ready. And in fact, Sunday I was in Ashland and the SOU president said, we're, we're working on emergency management plan with your, with your emergency manager. And it's amazing. And last night I was in Gold Hill and they're working with you on an emergency management plan as well. And, and from one end of the uh, county to the other. And I just, it's amazing what you're doing. And, and um, you're our um, employee of the month and 
probably employ the month for every month, and, and none too late. So congratulations, and thank you for all you do. Oh, they've taken all of my, my, my points here, but I, but I did want to say also that, you know, really, thinking about where, where we were when you stepped into this job is pretty amazing, Holly. And I, and I will say also, you know, I've been in personally in meetings just like you are talking about. People sing your accolades. And I really think it's really great the way you bring people together because this is a team effort, and uh, you've really done a great job doing that. And I think that's really where your strength is, and I appreciate that a lot. So congratulations. All right. All right. Well, good, good, let's give you this right now, and let's let, and then you can. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, can I say a few words? I didn't come down there, but I figured I could say them from here. I just want to say, as you just recognize, Holly is like an all-star. She's a superstar. She's a superstar in her profession, in her career. She's a master of her craft. She's one of the best I've ever seen, and I've worked for 31 years in counties all over the state. Um, we're really very fortunate to have her. It's not just here locally that they're singing her accolades. They do this all across our state. State Emergency Management reaches out for Holly for her experience and expertise. And I'm just really glad that you're here. Thanks for being here, Holly. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor and a privilege to not only receive this word, but um, award, but uh, serve the constituents of Jackson County, which is really the point. Um, and I really can't do this work without all of our wonderful county departments, um, our cities, our special districts, and all of our community-based organizations, because Commissioner Dodder, as you mentioned, emergency management really is a team effort. There is, there is no just one person, and it's pulling us all together so that we can um, really focus on, on just how we do better, communicate, coordinate, and, and um, serve our community. So. I appreciate this greatly, but this award really belongs to a lot of people, not just me. And um, so I appreciate everyone coming. And then unfortunately, my husband and family couldn't be here today. We got sick kids starting yesterday. So um, I want to say thank you to them and love it, them so much. And their support um, for me here is just incredible. So thank you so much. And appreciate it. Okay, we'll let the room clear for just a second here. <clears throat> and we will now move on into our request for and discussion of non-agenda items. We have a five minute limit pursuant to the codified ordinances of Jackson County section 213.06. Members of the public may address any item not on the agenda. However, pursuant to ORS 192.640, the Board of Commissioners is prohibited from discussing a principal subject that is not on the agenda. Therefore, the Board of Commissioners will listen to your concerns and may consider the matter you raise by asking staff to follow up on any questions or by placing the matter on the agenda for discussion at a future meeting. We do have one individual signed up here today in the auditorium, and that's Russ Kotz. Uh, please give your name and address for the record before speaking. Thank you. My name's Russ Kautz. My address is 106 Oregon Terrace, Medford, Oregon, 97504. Morning. Good morning. I attended the uh, town hall meeting last night sponsored by Jackson County for All because it's important to know where this organization is coming from. It was a packed house. Uh, Denise Krause and the panel of former commissioners did a great job with their presentation and how the three ballot measures will, number one, increase voter participation by making commissioner positions nonpartisan, improve representation by adding two commissioner positions, and reduce the salaries of commissioners upon adding the two positions. The cost analysis by Ms. Krause went through in some detail actually implied money would be saved or barely increased with the addition of two commissioners. It would be helpful to know if their cost analysis is correct. There were other areas of concern that were brought to light that left a number of questions. With these measures going on the May ballot, I encourage you to get ahead of this 
with some type of community presence. I think a debate would be the best forum to get to the truth. At least a town hall type meeting to present the other side of this information. We want to hear from you. Transparency and communication are essential as county commissioners. If nothing is done, I believe these measures will pass. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the auditorium wish to speak that didn't sign up? Come on up. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Logan Vaughn. I live at 1116 Murray Avenue, Medford. I just wanted to second on what Russ said. I was at the meeting last night, too. Um, it would be great to hear from you guys personally as uh, commissioners on this issue. Um, <laughs> Denise uh, alluded to saving money. <laughs> Some of the thoughts she had was office sharing, and she started to almost allude to sharing a hotel room when you're on trips and I mean, she didn't go there, but she, she, she might as well just said, why don't you just bicycle to work, Rick? I mean, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with that, right? Anyway, so I just want to let you guys get ahead of this. We appreciate the go job you guys are doing. God bless. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, anybody on uh, with their Zoom hand raised online? Mr. Chair, at this time, I do not have anyone with their Zoom hand okay. raised yeah. to speak. Uh, please, uh, staff would like to respond to... Yeah, I, I just want to think it's important to understand that under both under Oregon law, the county is an entity and county employees cannot uh, spend any time or resources to influence an initiative petition or to convince people to sign an initiative petition or not sign it or um, oppose or support any of the initiative petitions as ballot measures. That doesn't apply to the county commissioners uh, when it comes to the use of county time, your elected officials, and you're exempted from the definition of a public employee. Um, so just I, I, so the public has a as a an understanding, um, I think it's in the paper and stuff that we've filed. It, that someone's filed a, a request for an investigation to some things the county has done in the past, and we'll respond if that's appropriate. Uh, but it is important to understand that the county as an entity can't get involved in initiative petitions or uh, other election matters. Yeah, thank you. Well, with that being said, I will let you know that I intend, I have been, uh, and I will intend to continue to make my voice heard. Um, throughout this campaign, and I think I've made my position clear, but Rick, can I just add one more thing? Yes, please. So I think it's also important to say that the county, though, it's not, it's a, it's a prohibition against the county and county employees supporting and opposing. Um, we can provide um, factual-based information um, as it relates to the impacts of passing or, or not passing an initiative petition or a ballot measure. Thank you, and I think it's extremely important to, to provide accurate information to the public. So um, anyway, and I will, di I will ditto what, what uh, Rick just said. I, I intend to do the same thing. All right. With that, then we will move on, if I can find my glasses. So we're going nowhere without these. Um, so we'll move on to the content consent calendar, which this week consists of the minutes of meetings, the Board of Commissioners land use meeting of February 20 or February 7th, 2024, on file numbers 439-23-0008-LRP and 439-23-0024-SUB. And the Board of Commissioners work session of Friday, th uh, February 13th, 2024. Uh, Board of Commissioners regular meeting of Friday, February 14th, 2024 and the Board of Commissioners staff meeting of February 15th, 2024. And I will move approval of the consent calendar. I'll second that. Commissioner Dutter? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes, thank you. Uh, no public hearings today, so we'll move on to discussion and deliberation items. First item there is an order authorizing amendment number one to the Jackson County Personal Services contract dated June 23rd, 2023 with Four Leaf Incorporated. And this is order number 44-24, Mr. Jordan. And Mr. Chair, members of the board, in this case, Four Leaf Incorporated does currently contract with Jackson County Developmental Services Department. This is to provide additional staff services to uh, the Jackson County Wildfire Resiliency Permit Center. It's uh, located um, at the Wildfire <laughs> Resiliency Permit Center, um, and they uh, coordinate and expedite um, planning and building permits for Jackson County residents that were affected by the Almeda and South Oban chain fires. This amendment will add additional funding uh, to the already existing program to allow for the use of the remaining grant funds from the Wildfire Assistance Program uh, to be passed through the state of Oregon to the business development from the Business Development Department. 
uh, term of the amendments upon execution through June 30th of 2024. It's an additional expense of 201,000 and the remaining grant revenues cover that cost and I do recommend your approval. Thank you, any questions? No, I'll move, I'll move to approve order 44-24. Second. Um, comments? Cool. I, I, for one, I, I think this obviously, uh, this along with many, many other efforts though did help our community uh, recover and rebuild more quickly from the devastating fires and just about anywhere else something like this occurred. So I applaud all the efforts this one included and to continue yeah. it I think is still prudent. And I will add, I, you know, that's the feedback I got from both Talon and Phoenix that how much it, it helped to work with the county and all on this. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Daughter? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Next item is an order authorizing intergovernmental agreement number 44300-00026105 between the State of Oregon, Oregon Health Authority, and Jackson County. This is order number 45-24. Jordan again? Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, in this case, as you said, the Oregon Health Authority would like to continue to contract with Jackson County. This is to provide what's called the Choice Model Services. Uh, this is for residents of Jackson County or those who are assigned to Jackson County by the Oregon Health Authority. Uh, that program, the Choice Model Services Program, is designed to promote the availability and quality of individualized community-based services and support. This is for adults with mental illness uh, who are served in the most, uh, in the least restrictive environment possible, um, so that the use of long-term institutionalized care is minimized. The agreement will ensure clients have access to services that are consistent with the clinical needs of the individual and the purposes of the Choice Model Services Program. Term of the contracts January 1st of 2024 through June 30th of 2025. It does require ratification to become effective January 1st of 2024. It's a revenue of $680,010, and I do recommend your approval. Thank you. Questions, or we'll take on motion. Uh, I, I move approval of order number 45 24. I will second. Okay. Commissioner Dotter? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? Yes. Thank you. Last item on our agenda today is an order authorizing the 2024-2025 Intergovernmental Agreement number PO44300-0002611 for the financing of community mental health, addiction treatment, recovery, and prevention and problem gam gambling services between the State of Oregon, Oregon Health Authority, and Jackson County. And this is order number 46-24. Mr. Jordan. Right, Mr. Chair, as we typically do almost every year, every biennium, uh, the Health and Human Services Department requested financial assistance from the State of Oregon, the Oregon Health Authority for our community-based mental health and addictions programs. Do want to remind the board that the county doesn't serve to provide primary community-based mental health services. This is primary due to our obligation as the community health provider for mostly crisis uh, court coordination and uh, admits to the state, uh, admits and transitions to and from the state hospital. Uh, in this case, under Oregon Revised Statute 430.610 sub 4 and 430.640 sub 1, OHA has the authority to contract with and provide financial assistance to Jackson County, This, is, as I said, in order to su su uh, support mental health and addiction services. Under the term of the agreement, uh, Health and Human Services will provide or we will contract for community-based mental health addiction and gambling prevention services. Term of the agreement's January 1st, 2024 through June 30th of 2025. It does require ratification to become effective January 1st of 2024. It's a revenue of $15,543,522 and I do recommend your approval. Thank you. Any questions or take a motion? I'll move to approve order 46-24. Second. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Daughter? Yes. Commissioner Dyer? <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, thank you. I almost couldn't get that up. That does conclude our business for today, so this meeting is adjourned. We hope that you have enjoyed this week's Jackson County Board of Commissioners meeting. If you have any questions on any part of the show, please feel free to contact your Jackson County commissioners or staff. You can find their contact information at jacksoncountyor.gov. To review the content of this or any other recent meeting, under the Government tab, under Recorded Meetings, click on RVTV Live Streaming.